Welcome again to English 5300. This is a short video in which I'll be introducing you to the MLA Handbook 8th Edition, the style guide for all writing that we do in the discipline of literature. As you may know, the Modern Language Association is the disciplinary organization that covers all sorts of uh, work handled in the modern languages. So language instruction, uh, people who teach German or Spanish, um, literature research, so research on uh, modern American literature, research on medieval English literature, uh, research on Spanish literature or French literature. That's all handled by the Modern Language Association and they have a style guide that we're all supposed to try to follow in the writing we do in this discipline. You may be familiar with this style guide, uh, but this refresher is intended to help you get uh, up to speed on the 8th edition, uh, which is a fairly recent change. In essence, there are two things you should keep in mind, or there are two types of documents that you produce in one longer essay in an English literature uh, course. So you have the body of the essay, and then you have works cited at the end. And the sort of principle of the MLA style guide is to keep the citations that are in the body of the essay itself as brief as possible. They're supposed to be very, very efficient and short and brief. And then you have much more extensive documentation in that document that comes at the end, the, uh, the work cited. So in the body of an essay, you're going to just mention an author and a location. So uh, the page number of a novel or the line numbers of a poem or the act scene and line numbers of a play or the page numbers or paragraph numbers of a scholarly uh, article or book or that sort of thing. So that very brief information generally goes within parentheses at the end of the place where you're citing it. And then the work cited is where you'll have a much more extensive set of information. So this is the handbook for the MLA style guide. And uh, it has recently been updated in a format that many of my colleagues and I don't especially like. Unfortunately, it is the current standard, so we're all supposed to at least try to adhere to it. Um, you can get your hands on this, I'm sure, over at the library, and there are various online um, uh, resources for trying to cite things according to the MLA style. I would recommend against just uh, relying on a website to do your formatting for you, just because um, strange situations arise and Mistakes get made all the time. So you really ought to learn the basics of this for yourself. So the three basic types of material that you'll usually have on the work cited of a paper written in the MLA style are a journal article, so a scholarly journal article, a book, a monograph, or a section of a book. So that might either be um, a short story, like so from the collection of all of Edgar Allan Poe's uh, stories collected in one uh, set, like a four or five volume set, you might have you know, just um, you know, the Cask of Amontillado uh, as a citation. Or uh, you might have a scholarly collection of essays and you're just going to be citing one essay within that collection. Um, so anyway, those are the three types of main citations in an article, uh, a monograph, or uh, some portion of a larger uh, kind of heterogeneous authored uh, text. So I'd like to give you a practical example of how the two parts of a paper in the MLA style work. So the first is in the body of the essay. Uh, and I'm going to give you an example from an essay that I'm currently writing myself, which is about uh, Shakespeare and his sonnets and the natural world. <clears throat> and I'm going to be using uh, this edition of Shakespeare's sonnets, and I'm going to make a reference to uh, a line or a, uh, an argument that uh, Charlotte Scott makes in her book, this book called uh, Shakespeare's Nature from Cultivation, Nature to, uh, from Cultivation to Culture. So 
<clears throat> um, so I'm going to write this sentence first. The first sonnet of Shakespeare's sequence uses figures drawn from the seasons and front, drawn from nature to chastise the young man for refusing to procreate. And then I'll write this sentence. The speaker praises the beloved who is, quote, or who is the, quote, only herald to the gaudy spring, end quote, but criticizes the beloved's selfishness because he directs his attention 